welcome back to Better You. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson. I'm here on location at the GIS Expo here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm talking today with Jeff Stovall. He is the CIO for the city of Charlotte. Hi, Jeff. Hello, how are you doing today? So, Jeff, what exactly is GIS? Well, GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems. It's a way of combining information in computer records, images about uh, a geography or a location with information about that location. A lot of people are very familiar with GIS technologies because of the GPS that they may carry uh -huh. inside of their car, or they may use Bing Maps or Google Maps in order to be able to get information about how to get from one place to another. That's one aspect of GIS technology. And so how does the city of Charlotte and the county use GIS for their work? Certainly. Well, we use GIS all over the city and the county in order to deliver services. You can think of every city and every county has, is defined by its location. All the services that we provide are location-based. Uh -huh. So it's very natural for us to use GIS technologies in order to be able to do things like route police officers uh -huh. or firemen to, to emergencies, to be able to route solid waste trucks, to even create maps that provide information for our elected officials about what, what things are going on inside of the area and decisions that they need to make in order to be able to enhance our area. So why have a GIS Expo Day? Well, GIS Day is really just one day as part of Geography Awareness Week. Uh -huh. So the Wednesday of Geography Awareness Week, we celebrate GIS as a science and what it contributes to society. So what can I look forward to seeing when I go through your exhibit here? What you'll see is information from many of the vendors that provide services to the city and county. You'll see examples of how we use GIS to deliver services for our citizens. And you'll also find out information about careers in GIS. GIS happens to be one of the fastest growing careers in the computer sector. So, you know, I saw a lot of kids running around here today. Would they be doing something here today, too? Absolutely. We do have special activities geared just for the kids uh -huh. so they can get to understand not only what GIS provides as a science, uh -huh. but also how it's fun. It's related to geography, and geography is something that we continue to want to promote <laughs> with our youth in order to enhance their own understanding of the area. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, Jeff. I'm going to go and take a look and see what you have to offer us today. Absolutely. Please and thank stay you. As long as you can. All right. All right. Bye bye. Welcome back. I'm here at GIS Expo Day here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm here with Kirk Olmsted. He's with Mecklenburg County GIS. And Kirk, how do you all use GIS? Uh, well, good morning. Thank you for coming out this morning. We, uh, we use GIS for lots of different uh, business processes throughout the city and county. Uh, our group maintains all the property information, all the property lines in Mecklenburg County, and all the addresses. So we actually, if you look at this website here, it's called Polaris. And you can actually type in an address and pull up the information and the tax information. So the tax assessor uses this information to help with tax assessment. Also, we also do addressing for all of Mecklenburg County. And addressing is used for police, fire, and medic dispatch. So when a call comes, a 911 call comes in, you can actually dispatch a vehicle to that address and put that on a map. So the ambulance or the medic vehicle can actually get to the exact location and they can actually see that information in their vehicle. Um, but we have, we have lots of different applications. We, we use it for flood, floodplain mapping. Uh, we have a park locator application. We use it for homeland security. So we know if something happens at the nuclear McGuire facility, you have to evacuate lots of people. You can use a map to determine how many people are in a, in a certain area, if they're daycares, things like that. Um, we have an air quality application. 
we have a economic development, we use it for economic development. So we can show where vacant properties are. We can look at businesses in the area. So if you're moving to Charlotte, you could potentially try to target market a specific location. So um, GIS is really becoming pervasive. It's, it's getting integrated into everything within, you know, your cell phone has a GPS chip and right now you're being tracked by satellite. Um, so it's, it's everywhere. So. so anyone can go to this website and take a look at all of these things? Yep. If you go to emaps.shoremec.org uh -huh. and go to online applications, you can look at all these different applications. And it's all free. Thank you so much, Kirk. And we're going to go and take a commercial break, and we're going to go and take a look and see what else GIS has to offer the citizens here in Charlotte. Thanks. You believe this guy? Are you trying to start a wildfire? Sorry. Pass the honey. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. We are at the GIS Expo here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I'm here with Young Wei. And Young Wei has something exciting that he would like to share with us. Young Wei? Uh, okay, this is a GIS application. Um, we build for iPhone and Android, and so the general public can gain access to GIS information on the road on a mobile device. It runs on iPhone, Android, and uh, potentially we have the second phase will be more expanding to more uh, different devices. And uh, basically it does is carry a lot of GIS data from the city's uh, data warehouse and including uh, some of the data from the pro uh, county access office like the camera, um, property ownership information. And we also have uh, business data from various business systems from the um, city, like um, we have zoning, uh, neighborhood development services with uh, uh, code enforcement, uh, housing cases, things like that. Also, we have typical GIS um, data sets, like uh, um, uh, as you can see, there is a housing case, demolishing, fire station, schools, library, city maintained streets, all these that uh, all these information that are uh, maintained by the city GIS or external agencies can be all put together and uh, easily accessible through mobile devices. So anyone could log on to their phone and look at this? This is not just for the city and county, it's for everyday citizens? Yes, that's for public access. Uh, so so you, can, you can really get lots of information out directly out of your phone. So. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm going to go and see what else I can find out about GIS. Thank you. No I'm here with Daryl Poo, one of our city engineers. Hi, Daryl. How are you doing, Cynthia? Thank you for joining me today. I want to ask you, at this GIS Expo, how does GIS help you with your job as an engineer? Well, a lot of times when we have public meetings, we provide aerial photographs of the area that we're doing the project in. So it's very useful. We pull up a lot of homeowner information as far as the address, who the homeowner is, things of that nature. Aerial photographs are very helpful. We love those. So does it help you in, in the planning of the projects that you're working on in the neighborhood? Oh, absolutely. It lets us know whether there's sidewalk or curb and gutter in the area. It lets us know what utilities are going to be in conflict, whether it's telephone poles or fire hydrants or things of that nature. So they're all useful tools. It lets us know what the property boundaries are. You know, when, you, when we pull up the tax parcel information, uh, lets us know where the property uh, starts and ends. So it's all of that's very useful in planning out our strategy for roads. Are you having a good time today? I'm having a wonderful time. I'm having a great time. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm one of those uh, uh, geeks for uh, the ArcGIS stuff, and, uh, you know, I get a kick out of seeing the aerial photographs and uh, the mapping information, so I'm, um, I'm in heaven right now, pretty much. So would you say that GIS makes your job easy? It makes it a whole lot easier. It, it, it provides a lot of useful information, and um, you know, I don't know what we did with that, what we did before it, but I'm just glad we have it now in the 21st century. Well, I'm not going to keep you too long, Daryl. Thank you so much for joining me and answering my question about GIS Day and enjoy your day here. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank you. Here at the GIS Expo in Charlotte, North Carolina, I'm here with Catherine Krigler. She's a part of engineering property management, and they use GIS quite a lot. What all do you use GIS for, Catherine? 
Well, we use, in the stormwater division, we use our GIS to benefit the public in, in several ways. Um, we use our data to uh, help determine design of new projects when we put new infrastructure in. We also use that data to determine existing infrastructure that's in the ground for maintenance purposes. If it's outdated or undersized, uh, you know, we'll know that from looking at our data and our drainage specialists will be able to determine if, you know, they need to enlarge pipes or replace pipes. So that's um, one of the main benefits of our stormwater data. Um, in the engineering department for survey and mapping, they have put together this 3D visualization using a product called ArcScene. And this would enable the public, if you were to take it to a public meeting, say, um, they could visualize, if it would pop up better, uh, they could visualize the potential impacts of a construction project we're doing. So one of the visualizations on here is the potential impact of a dam on some rural area. Uh, so th this is something that could be used at a public meeting to inform the public of what we're working on and how it's going to affect them. So I want to ask you the same question I asked another one of your city engineers. How has GIS made your job easier? Well, I can't say that it's made my job easier. My job is um, I'm in charge of getting the data collected. So I use mobile GIS to go out and we collect all of our infrastructure using um, an ArcPad mobile application and GPS. Uh, so that is, that is all we do is mobile GIS and, and GPS work. So I guess it makes our job easier because we don't have to go out there with GPS equipment and plot things on a piece of paper. So it, it's all digital and we can easily load it back into our master GIS. Uh, thank you so much for answering my question, Catherine, and I'm going to go and see who else I can talk to about how great GIS is. Hi, to Betty. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson, and today I'm here at the GIS Expo in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm here with Scott Bodine. Hi, Scott. Hi, how are you doing this morning? And you're with who again? Uh, Catawba Lands Conservancy. We're a local nonprofit here in the Charlotte area. Uh, we do uh, land conservation. So let's talk a little bit about what all your organization does. Well, we're driven by members, and we go out and we work with landowners, volunteer uh, who, volunt who voluntarily wish to preserve their land in perpetuity. Um, they can either donate the land to the conservancy, and we would own it, or we'd use what's called a conservation easement, where they would continue to own the land, and we uh, would have a conservation easement on the property, which would prohibit any development forever. Oh, I see. I see we have a poster here. Let's talk about this for a few minutes. Well, the Conservancy has a, a vision uh, to, to protect uh, 50,000 acres by 2030. Uh, currently, 2010, we have about 10,000 acres, and we've sort of broken out uh, our vision down into these sort of touch points. We, we are about you know clean water, local farms, wildlife habitat, and connecting people to nature. And uh, um, each one of these maps sort of hi highlights uh, where uh, these sort of uh, attributes are and where we're going to go out and use GIS to locate properties that we feel are worth conserving. And this one right here talks about the Carolina Thread Trail. This is a project we've taken on to um, basically connect people to nature, to uh, put this network of uh, about a thousand miles of trail in the greater Charlotte area. And as you can see, that goes into South Carolina and basically connect people to nature through these, uh, through these trails. And down at the bottom, you can see our sort of reasoning for this. Uh, these are some growth maps that were done at UNCC, basically showing developed and um, rural lands. Uh, for example, our area right here, 1976, 1996, and what it will look like in 2030 unless we sort of uh, plan uh, to preserve some of these lands because quality of life is a, a very big issue for people living in this area. You know, I'm going to ask you the same question I've asked some other folks. How does GIS help you do the work that you do? Uh, it's very critical. Um, this is a relatively large area. We're a very small nonprofit, and we need to um, find lands that are worth protecting. So we use GIS to um, come up with a laundry list of conservation values, things like soil, um, water, uh, frontage, lakes, ponds, um, uh, size, uh, adjacency to other uh, protected properties and we use all that to identify the parcels that uh, have the highest conservation value and if you think about it we have we have six counties and maybe there are about 50 to 90 thousand parcels each county 
how do you smartly find those areas that are worth conserving? And so that's what we use GIS to do. Well, thank you so much for joining me today, and I'm going to continue on to see what else I can find out about how great GIS is. Thank you, Scott. Location at the GIS Expo in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm here with Carrie Sher, and she's going to talk about GET or GET. What exactly is that, Carrie? Well, the GET it started about 10 years ago. It's the GIS Enterprise team for the city of Charlotte, and what we are is an organization that covers all the key business units uh, represented on this team for ge geography and geospatial services. Who are some of the people on this team? So we have people from the police department as well as uh, people from fire. There's people, there's a person, a representative from the county. Todd Wilson is from the county. Um, we have a leadership team, it's Twyla McDermott, and people from EMPM. So uh -huh. it's a large source of, of uh, people. Uh -huh. And what exactly do you all do? So what we do is uh, set standards, policies, procedures, and guidelines, and also make sure people are informed, educated. Uh -huh and make sure that they are trained uh -huh. and understand what's going on and <laughs> what policies are out there uh -huh. to help them to forward GIS. And so how does GIS make your job easy? I've been asking everyone that and everyone's been giving me a similar answer. So what is Let's your answer to that? Let's see if I have the same answer. <laughs> Well, GIS is my job uh -huh. for the most part. I'm also an IT manager for Stormwater, uh -huh. but <laughs> GIS primarily is the foundation of all of our, our particular um, IT. Uh -huh. So what that does is you can actually visualize data that's in databases and you can connect it, and uh -huh. it just gives you a clearer picture of what's going on out there on uh -huh. our landscape. Thank you so much for joining me today, Carrie. We're going to break for a commercial break and we'll be right back to see what else we can see here at the GIS Expo here in Charlotte, North Carolina. There's a place not so far away. Ask your parents to take you. Come to the forest where the other you lives. But first, stop by discovertheforest.org. And welcome back to Betty. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson. I'm here at the GIS Expo in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm here with a dear friend of mine from Charlotte Department of Transportation, and we're going to talk about how GIS impacts the work that she does for us. GIS impacts a lot of what we do. We collect a lot of data for the city of Charlotte, uh -huh. including signalized intersections. We do our center line and, and speed limits. Uh, we have a lot of data here that we use to help improve citizen service. And so on a daily basis, we're using GIS to improve the world. So, GIS, you said it helps you with? Well, we have a connectivity program okay. where we work on building out a robust street network, and uh -huh. that's very important that we use GIS to analyze where possible streets could go and build our network. Um, we also do bicycling and pedestrian projects. We plan for better bicycling networks and sidewalks. We're currently getting a sidewalk inventory where we're going to get all the sidewalk data in Charlotte. We'll be able to do quality of life studies and better planning so people can walk and bike to places and not just get in their cars and drive. We're working on making it a more walkable and livi livable community. So how has GIS made your job easier? Well, I am a GIS analyst, so without GIS, I probably wouldn't have a job. <laughs> so it's made it easier for me to actually work. But I do love GIS. It's the whole idea of putting map images with tables of data it's, it's a wonderful job, and I feel like you can do this anywhere you go. It's in every department, and it's in every, every city in the world. You're going to use GIS on some level. Well, thank you so much. We're going to go and see who else we can talk to to see how much they like GIS here at the GIS Expo in Charlotte, North Carolina. Welcome back to GIS Expo here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm here with Benita. She's with the Mecklenburg County Stormwater. Hi, Benita. Hi. <laughs> well, I want to ask you, Benita, GIS, how does that help you do your work for the Mecklenburg County? Um, GIS helps us to um, monitor and measure changes in the floodplain boundaries. It helps us keep the public more informed by producing maps and applications that can visually show them how floodplain you know, changes are going to impact them. Oh, so if a person wanted to buy a house 
the floodplain. Exactly. If a person yeah, wants to buy a home in yeah. a floodplain, you know, we would instantly be notified, you know, when they go through their permitting process that, you know, they're trying to purchase that, that property or, or, you know, build in that property. And then, you know, we would take the necessary measures to make them informed of what it actually means for them to be in that floodplain and how that's going to impact them. Yeah. So what exactly is a floodplain? Oh, wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> floodplains are lines and boundaries that are <laughs> drawn by FEMA, and we um, man maintain that information. And it's just, you know, the different types and different kinds and oh. um, where water tends to flood based off the time of oh, year okay. and thing after rains and things like that. Huh. That sounds like that's something that we really need yes, here. Yes, yes. yes. And, so, yeah, we also track... Uh, um, every time it rains and there's storms, the amount of water that goes into the creeks uh -huh. and streams, you know, so that we can keep the public informed. Uh, thank you so much, Benita. Hi, and welcome back to GIS Expo Day here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson, and I'm here with Brian and Marcy. Brian and Marcy work for the Charlotte Planning Department for the city of Charlotte. So, can one of you tell me how GIS impacts your job or helps you do your job better? Well, uh, GIS actually impacts our job greatly. It is our primary tool for how we plan. Um, I mean, if you look at this map right here, it shows a hotspot analysis, which uh, takes into account a bunch of determining factors in where we plan, such as development pressure, where capital facilities are at, where they're coming to, and so forth. So you'll see it's saying plan at Prosperity Church, plan at Still Creek, plan in Ballantyne, plan right here so and you'll see over here at this map which you probably uh, can't see right now but um, we're already planning for the Still Creek area um, and we'll begin some of these other processes real soon so what does the future look like for GIS with the Charlotte planning department I can only get bigger only get bigger, only get bigger. yeah I mean as we as we're getting more aggressive in how we plan and and, and taking in, into account more factors, um, the, the demand becomes greater on more GIS personnel in our department. In fact, planners are actually transitioning into being land use planners as well as GIS professionals. You see that transitioning right now. Okay, thank you, Brian. I'm going to ask Marcy a couple of questions. I'm here with Marcy. Marcy, the Charlotte Planning Department, how do you work with the citizens with GIS? We actually have different focus groups and development strategies that we develop uh -huh. in the planning department and we actually have public meetings. So we bring in the public and invite them for all their comments and any of their suggestions. Uh -huh. So we take their suggestions and their knowledge and we put them in our plan uh -huh. and we use them when we develop and put these things to city council. Ah, so you work with not only the citizens, but other departments within the city. Is that correct? What other departments do you work with in the city? We work with CDOT, the Department of Transportation, the Charlotte Department of Transportation. We work with utilities. We work with engineering. So we focus on many, many departments, and we also bring everybody in to make their suggestions with cats uh -huh. and everybody so we can have everybody involved in the planning process when uh -huh. we do a, a focused area plan. Uh -huh. Thank you so much, Marcy, and I'm going to go and enjoy the rest of my day here at the GIS Expo in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm here with Gary Horton, and we're here to talk about geocaching. What exactly is that, Gary? Well, it's a high-tech scavenger hunt where you use handheld GPSs to go out, and uh, you find treasures that is hidden by anybody in the, in the, you know, anybody that wants to hide a treasure can come and play the game. It's free to play. All you really need is a a handheld GPS unit and a desire to get out into the wilderness and explore. So if someone wanted to play this scavenger hunt game with you all, how would they get in contact with you to do that? Uh, well, the easiest way is you have to go to the website geocaching.com. Uh -huh. You set up an account, which is free, and then through that account, you can anonymously email other players. Uh -huh. And so that's how you contact other players is you email them and then they'll email you back and eventually you'll get to become friends and you'll know each other on first name basis and wow. home phone numbers and all. So tell me, what are some of the oddest things people have found on the scavenger hunt? Oh, the oddest? Uh, <laughs> fake pine cones, uh -huh. golf balls, uh, dog droppings, uh, artificial snakes, lizards, bugs, mosquitoes, 
Um, what else? Uh, the, the imagination is endless. I mean, it's just endless of whatever you want to hide, you can hide. As long as it follows the rules of ground speak, which we do have rules that uh -huh. says we can hide certain caches a certain way in certain areas. Uh -huh. And we do have a North Carolina reviewer, as all states do, which we have to submit our geocache to it, then he will review it to make sure it follows all the guidelines, and then it would be published on the website. And how long has this been in operation? Since May the 2nd of 2000. So it's fairly new. Yeah, we just celebrated our 10th year. Wow. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I know that you're about to start a workshop, so I won't keep you. And thank you again. Oh, yeah. Welcome back to the GIS Expo here in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm here with the organizer, Paul Martin. Paul, tell me, did you have a good turnout this time for GIS? I think we had a great turnout this year. We had an increased number of um, student groups come out. Um, we had National Geographic's giant traveling map of Africa, which was certainly a draw for them, as well as probably 20-some vendors. Um, and I do want to add that um, it, I couldn't do this by myself. We had folks from the city of Charlotte, Central Piedmont Community College, and UNC Charlotte um, help coordinate this as well. So why are you having this event? Well, it's kind of dual purpose. Part of it's kind of public education outreach to the community about how government uses GIS to provide services to citizens and outreach to schools um, in terms of education and how geography is really a part of our daily life, how a lot of decisions we make really incorporate geography. You know, when you think about what am I going to do, it usually involves going someplace. I understand you had some training workshops, and Julie Malay was in one of your workshops. And Julie, you work for the city of Charlotte, is that correct? Yes, I'm, I'm in the real estate um, department, and um, I'm in a, a work all-day workshop today um, learning how to review uh, maps and plats to be recorded for um, land transfers. So you use GIS with the work that you do for the city? We do. We use it for lots of different um, uh, research purposes and, uh, and mapping purposes. So, Paul, are you planning another GIS Expo next year? We'll do it next year. We've been doing them for probably 11 or 12 years in different locations. We've been at Spirit Square for the past two years and think it accommodates kind of everything that we like to do here. So we'll be back next year, November. Thank you so much, thank Paul. You. And thank you, Julie. And thank you. I want to thank each and every one of my viewers for staying tuned to A Better You. We come on every Wednesday at 6 p.m. on Public Access Channel 21.